Good afternoon, everybody. My talk is called Never Assume When Teaching uh, WordPress. So, The first thing I want you to do today is imagine a baby. This is my fiance's cousin. She's very adorable. Uh, and specifically, I want you to imagine a baby learning how to walk. Uh, this baby is about to do something that it's never done before. She's never done before. And it's, it's something that you've been doing literally your whole life, minus a year or two or three. I don't, I'm not sure when babies learn how to walk. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, how would you react to that? You know, maybe some of you are parents and you know you, how you would react. And it's probably with encouragement, right? You want that baby to learn how to walk. And if he or she falls, you pick them up and you help them and you encourage them. But imagine if you reacted like this. Oh, come on, this is easy. Obviously, you just put one foot in front of the other and you walk. That sounds completely preposterous, right? Uh, you are discouraging this child by making it seem like it's something the child should already know. Now I want you to think about the last time uh, you taught WordPress, or somebody you know taught WordPress, or maybe even the last tutorial you read. Right. I've been using WordPress for 12 years, so I'm pretty familiar with the, the functionality, with the terminology. It's, it's second nature to me. But to people just learning it, it could feel a lot like they're learning how to walk. And we don't want to, incur or we don't want to discourage those people, right? We want more people using WordPress, right? We're at 25%, we wanna increase those numbers. So today I'm gonna to talk about four things that I try to keep in mind when I'm teaching people how to use WordPress. And the first thing is, uh, remember your first time using WordPress. How would you explain posts and pages to somebody? Or custom post types, right? To, to a user, you might, uh, you, you, they'll, they'll think it's all the same thing. They're web pages, right? A post is a web page, a page is a web page, a custom post type is a web page. But you and I know uh, that, uh, well, posts are, uh, you know, they're organized by date and, and listed in reverse chronological order, and, and that doesn't matter for pages. Oh, and you don't apply categories and tags to pages, and uh, the permalink structure is different too, right? And, and uh, that, that sounds super overwhelming to somebody who's just learning it. And I know this because I gave a similar description to my students when I was teaching them how to use WordPress. And boy, you would not believe the looks I was getting. Just like, like open mouth, like what are you teaching us? Uh, so uh, <laughs> I, I dialed it back a little bit and I, I, took, I took things a little slowly and I showed them and I gave them examples, right? So uh, again, posts and pages, the difference comes naturally to me. But the first time I learned WordPress, it didn't. Pages didn't even actually exist in WordPress when I first started using them. But um, so, uh, and I, I try to think about that. And, and, and it's something that should be considered, right? The first time I learned how to program, uh, I, it took me an entire semester to get it. I struggled through that semester. Like, variables, what? I don't understand. Uh, and, then, and then one day it just clicked. And, it's, it's tough, it's new concepts, and I try to think about that when I teach programming, and the same thing can be applied to WordPress. The second thing I try to think about is know that the person learning does not know. And this is one of my favorite XKCD comics, maybe just behind like little bobby tables. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and it basically says that there are approximately 10,000 people in the US who do not know something, that they're hearing about it for the first time. And that you shouldn't make fun of people for admitting they don't know something, because now you get to teach that person, okay? And, and the same thing goes for WordPress, right? Or let's, Star Wars comes out, maybe if you've seen my talk, you know I love Star Wars, right? Uh, but um, Star Wars comes out in a couple of weeks, and the first time, uh, or usually when somebody tells me they've never seen Star Wars, I do this. Oh my God, you've never seen Star Wars? <laughs> but what I should do is this. Oh my God, you've never seen Star Wars. I get to show you Star Wars. 
It's something I love and I'm passionate about, and watching somebody watch it for the first time is incredible, right? Or going to Disney World. Taking somebody who's never been to Disney World for the first time is awesome, because you get to tell them all the fun things and show them all the stuff that they don't know about, and it's, it's amazing, it's incredible, right? And the same thing goes for WordPress. Somebody who doesn't know WordPress, you now get to show that person something that you love, and it's, it's great. So when somebody doesn't know something, you should, you should relish that and, and um, realize that you're teaching them something that you really, really love. Obviously kills. Oh, well, obviously you create a new post by going to posts, add new post. <laughs> hmm. Maybe some of you have said that. I have definitely said that. Because it seems obvious, right? It's, oh, I want to add a new post, I click post, add new post. But it's not obvious or it's not necessarily obvious. And by saying things like obviously, or just, or simply, it, it makes it seem like the learner should already know that thing, right? Uh, so I try not to use that language, because I understand why it's used. It's used because you're trying to make it seem easy. You don't, you don't want them to be scared, so you use those words. But from the learner's perspective, they're thinking, oh, obviously, well, I didn't know that. Maybe I'm not smart enough to use WordPress, right? And uh, one of my favorite quotes on this topic actually comes from Rami Abraham. He gave a fantastic talk this morning. Uh, and he says on writing tutorials, it's important to consider leveraging your capacity for empathy. Be the reader. And this, this echoes the things I've been saying uh, for the last few minutes, right? Think about the person reading your tutorial. If they knew how to do the things that they're reading about, they wouldn't be reading your tutorial. Uh, so using terms like obviously and just uh, and simply, uh, I, it seems like you're, um, I, I understand because I've done it. I've, I've done all of these things. It seems like you're trying to help, but it, it can be discouraging. So, And the last thing I want to tell you uh, is to make them feel comfortable. All right? When I sit down in a one-on-one -on -one session, especially with, I teach college students and uh, especially with uh, college students or, or clients uh, who are using WordPress for the first time, they will say, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm really bad at computers. And I understand why they're saying that, they're doing something brand new, they're nervous that they're about to do something, they don't want to look stupid. Uh, and I tell them that's, that's okay, that you're bad with computers, right? I tell them that if everybody could do what I do, I'd be out of a job. And that's absolutely true, right? If, if everybody already knew WordPress and how to make WordPress themes, like I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be making WordPress themes for anybody or teaching anybody WordPress. So it's a small joke, uh, but hopefully it breaks the ice a little bit and it helps the person I'm sitting with relax because when they're relaxed, they ask more questions and they, they get more adventurous and they try more things and they just in general get more out of this session. Uh, and that's really why you're having it, right? If they're nervous, they're not going to ask questions. How many of you have withheld a question because you thought it sounded dumb, right? Yeah I've, yeah, I've done the same thing. I'm actually really used to sounding dumb now, so I just ask whatever I want. Uh, <laughs> but uh, make the person feel comfortable so that they ask more questions because they'll get more out of it, right? And above all, remember you're there to help. The person's approaching you or reading your tutorial or going to your class because they want your help, and you need to let them know that. So uh, I'm Joe Casabona. I'm a front-end developer at Crowd Favorite, and I teach WordPress courses and computer courses. Uh, thank you for coming to this talk. Thank you.